Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you the installation process for Ubuntu 2204, which was released today. Now, a spoiler alert, there's not a whole lot new when it comes to the installer, so if you've already installed a previous version of Ubuntu, then you know what to expect in this video. It's pretty much the same thing again. But despite the fact that the installation process has not changed, I think it's a lot of fun to show the installation process, and if nothing else, it makes it really cool to go back in time and look at the installation process of previous releases and see what's changed and how things have matured over the years. I think it's almost like a time capsule, if you will. So I always make sure to create updated installation videos anytime that I can. But anyway, we're going to check out the full installation process, which means that I'm going to wipe out the entire disk, delete everything, and make Ubuntu the only operating system on the computer. So let's go ahead and check out the installation process for Ubuntu 2204. All right, so here I am on my studio computer ready to install Ubuntu 2204. On my end, I went ahead and created bootable installation media for Ubuntu off camera. If you haven't already done that, then what I would recommend is you go to the official website for Ubuntu. You could download the ISO image from there, and I'll also have a link down below in the description that'll take you right to that site. And then you could use that download to create your bootable installation media. If you're not already aware of the process for creating bootable installation media, then I do have a video on my channel already that'll walk you through that process. So rather than repeating that here, you could check out that video. I will leave a card for that right about here, and that video will walk you through the process. Anyway, what you're seeing on the screen right now is an actual Intel NUC, and if you didn't already know, on my channel, I always use real hardware for tutorials and reviews, unless I let you know otherwise. So what you're seeing here is my actual boot menu. So what I'm going to do is select the option that represents my flash drive. And in my case, that's going to be the last option right here. So I'll select that and press enter. And here we have the boot menu for the Ubuntu installer. And we have a handful of options here, but primarily the first option is what you want. The first option allows us to demo or actually install Ubuntu. But if you have a problem with your video card or display or something like that, then you could actually choose the Safe Graphics option, this option right here. The OEM install option is available if you want to repackage or reseal a computer for someone else. For example, if you are selling an older computer or repurposing a computer or something like that, the OEM install option, what that'll do is at the end of the installation process, it'll set it up such that the next time it boots, it'll ask the user, the end user, to create their own account. And that's very similar to what you might see if you buy a brand new computer. We could also boot to the next volume in the list, and we could also directly access the UEFI firmware settings as well. But what I'm going to do is choose the first option right here to get the process started. And right here, we have the very first screen for the Ubuntu installer, and it's ready to go. And before we actually get started with the installer, what I recommend that you do is click the Try Ubuntu option, and that gives us a chance to see how Ubuntu would work on our hardware before we install it. And that's a great thing to do. I never recommend that anyone ever install a Linux distribution until you first tried it out in demo mode or live mode to make sure that it even works in the first place. Anyway, at this point, we have the actual Ubuntu desktop that's fully usable. And like I mentioned, we could use live mode here to make sure that everything works. For example, if you have a second display, you'll want to make sure that you plug that in, ensure that it works. Any audio devices, scanners, printers, things like that, it's a good idea to make sure those things are plugged in, so that way you'll know whether or not all of your hardware is compatible. Now, if you don't have any of those types of devices that I've just mentioned, you still want to make sure that everything works. For example, I see a lot of people that install Ubuntu later to find out that their wireless card doesn't work, so you'll definitely want to make sure that networking is functioning properly. So up here, I have a networking icon that shows me that I'm connected to wired Ethernet. Now that icon wasn't there when I started this recording because I actually had my network port disabled on the switch end of things. I've just re-enabled that off camera. But what I can see here is that I do have a network connection. 
In addition, this Intel NUC has Wi-Fi as well. So if I click up here, and then I go down here to Wi-Fi, and then select Network, I have a list of wireless networks in my area. And if you do have Wi-Fi on your device, you want to make sure that your Wi-Fi networks show up right here. If they don't, then that might mean that your Wi-Fi card is not supported. If that's the case, I do have a video on my channel that'll help you understand what you can do, what your options are, if for some reason Wi-Fi doesn't work. In fact, I'll leave a card for that video right about here. Anyway, I'm going to cancel this. I do prefer wired ethernet whenever I do have that available. And the next thing I'm going to do is just open up the browser. I wanna make sure that I'm able to browse the internet. And what I'll do is just go to a website. So right here, I'll just type in my own. And as you can see, it looks like internet is working just fine. So that means I'm ready to install Ubuntu 22.04, so let's go ahead and get started. And down here, we have an icon that gives us the ability to actually start the installer. So what I'll do is double click on that. And here we have the installer. So the first screen gives us access to the release notes, which is pretty cool. And then we have a selection for languages here. So if your primary language is not the one that's highlighted, you could just go ahead and choose whichever language is your preferred language or your primary language here. And then once you've selected that, you could go here and click continue. Next up, the installer is giving us an option to customize our keyboard layout. In my case, it auto detected my keyboard as being a English US keyboard, which is actually true. If your keyboard is something other than that, you can make your selection here. You could also type right here in this text box and that'll give you an opportunity to test out your keyboard to make sure that everything is working. Anyway, let's click continue. Now on this screen, we do have a couple of very important choices to make. For example, what we could do is choose to have a normal installation, which is the default here, or a minimal installation. So with a normal installation, you're going to get pretty much every application that you might need by default. And that'll include basic apps like a web browser, office software, and others a minimal installation that includes just the web browser as well as some basic utilities. So that means your installation will be a little bit leaner if you were to go with the minimal option. Now, unless you have a very good reason to do that, for example, you might be an intermediate or advanced user and you know exactly which apps you want to install. In that case, you might choose minimal installation, but I'm going to leave it here on normal installation. Next, we have a checkbox right here that gives us the opportunity to download some of the updates while Ubuntu installs, and I can't think of any reason not to do that. You might still have some updates after the fact. This won't install everything, but if nothing else, it'll give you a head start. This box right here for installing third-party graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, I recommend that everybody choose this right here, and the reason for that is you might have some hardware that requires additional drivers, and if you do, then you have a better chance of getting support for that hardware by checking this box. Anyway, I've made my selections here, so I'll click Continue. On this screen, we could choose our installation type, and on my end, I already had Ubuntu 22.04 installed. I was actually getting ready for the review of Ubuntu 22.04, which is also being uploaded today along with this video. On your end, you might have a different operating system installed and a different set of options here. But what I want to do is actually erase my entire disk and make Ubuntu the only operating system. This will actually wipe out everything on my disk. So on your end, I would recommend that you back everything up if you haven't already done so. And we could go ahead and select this option right here. Now, in addition to taking over the disk, we have some advanced features right here that we can choose if we wish to do so. So if I click on that, we could use LVM, and we could also use ZFS. Now, for most of you, I don't really recommend ZFS. The footprint is a bit higher, so you'll notice that more of your memory is going to be used up. This is for professionals that actually need the features that ZFS provides. So in that case, I don't recommend that you choose this option unless you actually want to try out ZFS. I'm going to leave my selection on None, and then I'll click OK. And with that, we can actually begin the installation process. Now at this point, we've answered all the questions we need to get the installation process started, so I'll click Install Now. 
And then we get one last confirmation right here before our disk is completely wiped out. And that is what I want to do, so I'll click continue. And even though it's actually installing in the background right now, it's allowing us to multitask a bit. So what it's going to do is ask us some remaining questions, and it's going to do this while it installs in the background. Anyway, what I'll do is click right here. The whole point is to move this little circle close to your geographic location. That's going to set your time zone and things like that. So what I'm going to do is just move this dot over here to Michigan, which is where I'm at. Even though it says New York down here, we'll ignore that. I am actually in the same time zone as people in New York, so that should be fine. I'll click continue. And then here we could add information for the user account. So I'll just type in mine. And here we could actually name our computer. And this is for those of you that intend to use some sort of networking, for example, file sharing, because you definitely want to make sure that you can distinguish one computer from another. So we want to give this computer a name that we could definitely remember it by. I think in my case, J Desktop is more than fine. Then here we have the username, and this is going to default to your actual first name, whatever first name you type in the your name box at the top here. So for me, that should be fine. And then next we create a password for our user. You could choose whatever password you'd like. So you just go ahead and type in your password twice and you should be good to go. Next, we have an option to log in automatically, which might be useful for those of you that are setting up something like a kiosk. But other than that, I wouldn't recommend choosing that option. It's probably a good idea to have some sort of protection from someone logging into your account. And we also have an option to connect to an Active Directory domain as well. That's beyond the scope of this particular video, but just know that this option does exist if you do need that in the future. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue. So what I'm going to do is let this install. It should only take a few more minutes and it should be ready. And then once it is, I'll be right back. And it looks like the installation process is complete. So at this point, we can continue testing, just like it says here, or we could reboot into our new installation. And what I'm going to do is restart because, well, I am excited to check this out, so let's go ahead and do that. And just like it's telling me to do, I will remove the installation media, so that way it doesn't boot back into the installer again. So I've done that, and I'll press Enter. And here we have the login screen. So I guess that means our installation was a complete success. So I'll click on my username, and then I'll type in my password. And let's check it out. And here we have the default desktop. The first time you log in, you'll see the screen right here. And if you have any of these online accounts, you could actually set these up. And doing so would give you access to file sharing, for example, cloud storage, as well as email and things like that. If that's something that you'd like to use, you could go ahead and go through with that process. I'm going to skip it for now. And this screen here is asking our permission to upload some information to Canonical, the makers of Ubuntu. This is not going to have any personally identifiable information included in that report, so it's probably a good idea to send it along. They're not really asking for much, and we are able to download Ubuntu for free, so fair is fair. Now, if you're curious what the report is going to contain, you could click right here where it shows Show the First Report, and that'll show you the information that the report contains. So in my case, you can see that it's information specific to my computer. And I haven't actually sent this along for this particular computer just yet, so I'm actually going to send it. Now, by default, location services is disabled. If you plan on using any map apps or something like that, then you could go ahead and enable this. But you don't have to worry about it so much right now. This is something you could always enable later in settings if you'd like to do so. So I'll click Next. And then according to this, we're ready to go. We have additional apps right here that we can install if we'd like. These aren't all the apps that we can install on this release, but these are some of the more popular apps that'll help you get started. To download additional apps, you can check out Software. That's the name of the software installer. And you can access that by clicking right here to launch the software app. But even after you close this window, we have an icon for it right here. Anyway, I'll leave it up to you to explore Ubuntu 22.04 and check it out. And you could also check out my full review of Ubuntu 22.04, which is on my channel right now. I'll leave a card for that right about here. So if you'd like a more in-depth look at this release, you could go ahead and check out that video.
So there you go. In this video, I walked you guys through the full installation procedure for Ubuntu 22.04, and I hope it was helpful. If it was helpful and you did like this video, then please consider clicking that like button. That would really help me out. Also, be sure to check out my full review for Ubuntu 22.04, which is actually on my channel, well, right now. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.